the big red button for those of you watching this by video. Welcome to uh, Waiting for Starshot. Don't get Layout Builder working right now. Uh, so thanks for joining us today and uh, we're going to have an interesting time working our way through this. A little bit about me, my name is Rod Martin. I work for OS Training or Open Source Training. I've worked for them now for an, quite a number of years. I do training for Acquia and Chromit Source as well. So i kind of a contractor for a lot of different trainings. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere at I'm Rod Martin. So my Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Drupal, Slack, I'm, I'm Rod Martin pretty much everywhere. Um, I've been teaching beginners and introducing people to Drupal now for about 13 years. My first training was at DrupalCon Chicago in 2011. And I've been very blessed to be over, all over the world doing this, and I really love it. Um, some of the video training was Acquia Academy, LinkedIn Learning, OS Training, of course. Um, I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube uh, for OS Training as well. You can find those just by Googling. I also do training for Promit Source and for Taito Learning. Uh, most of that is either Drupal Immersion, a five-day class starting from, again, zero to 100 miles an hour, doing uh, site building, theming, and module development in a week. And then I also do a lot of co uh, custom content editor training, where we build a manual right from their site and things like that. Um, I've got a site called DrupalHelps.com. It's not finished yet, but it's all about what we're talking about today, and you're welcome to take a quick peek at it if you'd like. I live in Dillsboro, Indiana, which is a thriving metropolis of like 600 people, uh, about 45 minutes southwest of Cincinnati, and uh, love living out in the country. Uh, my download speed a couple of years ago was 4 meg. My upload speed was 0.4 meg. Yes. And that last year they ran fiber down my street. I have a gig up and down. Pretty excited about that. Uh, I do play ice hockey a couple times a week. I grew up in Canada. And so this is a Drupal 8 jersey I won at DrupalCon LA. Where I don't wear it very often, but I should have worn it here. Uh, I'm going to wear it at Drupal, at Drupal Camp or GovCon uh, next month. And I ride a motorcycle pretty much everywhere I go. So I rode the bike down, did the Dragon's Tail, did the Blue Ridge Parkway on the way down this time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, that's a little bit about me. Like I said, I love Drupal, and I've been teaching it now for quite a number of years. Um, I, I have taught WordPress and Joomla, and pretty much at this point, I'm all in on Drupal. have been for about three to four years now. Why this session? Uh, we kind of already started having that conversation a little bit before we started. But here's the deal. I teach beginners. When people come to my training, often they're coming from SharePoint, they're coming from uh, .NET, they're coming from all kinds of different CMSs, and they're learning Drupal, some of them seeing Drupal for the very first time. And over those five days together, we get to the part where you start laying out your site building. And everybody goes, oh, well, this isn't very good, is it? And no, it's not. Uh, Drupal's layout has been its weakness for ever. But now, especially with the modern tools like WordPress and Elementor, Joomla has a thing called Joom Shaper. These page builder layout tools are amazing in these other platforms. Marketers don't want to learn how to do template overrides. They want to drag and drop. They want to be able to create landing pages quickly that are beautiful. And so there's a bunch of solutions. I'm going to share a few of them with you. Uh, and again, they're all in the manual. But what I have found is that we have a group of ambitious site builders who want to just work in the UI. And so for those of you who don't know how to code, could care less about learning how to code, this is for you. Uh, today's session is about making Layout Builder work with absolutely no code involved. So that's the promise, and hopefully I'll meet that promise as we go. Uh, I'm also, at the end of the day, going to give you an absolute free starter site that you can use based that, that you're going to see all the way through this presentation. You click a button and it boots itself up in a Gitpod repository, and you'll need a GitHub account. I've got a video on how to get it up and running. And uh, so you'll have that um, at the end of the day, and hopefully that's going to be super helpful. So like I said, 
the ambitious site builder is the person I'm targeting, not only with this training, but all the training I do. Uh, I do the introduction to module development for Acquia and for, uh, for other companies as well. But my thrill, what really gets me going, is site builders. People who just love Drupal and want to make beautiful sites out of it and either don't want to or don't have the expertise to get deep into the code. So that's today. This is our site building workflow. This is what we use to, tr to teach people how to work with Drupal. Um, it's something I put together for OS training. We use it in all of our training. And so we're talking about step number five. This is where, this is where everybody grinds to a halt. You talk about structured data, everybody gets excited. They love the idea of structured data, content types, fields, the ability to, uh, to use taxonomy, to do amazing things with categorization. X and then boom, the brakes hit when we get to layout. Yeah. So what I'm going to share with you today, again, is a way of using Layout Builder with zero code. Now let me tell you how I built it, just before we go any further. I got sick at Christmas time. COVID and bronchitis, same time. Ooh. Sucked to be me. So I'm in a chair, <laughs> getting better, and I, and I have 30 Joomla sites to bring into Drupal this year. And I'm thinking to myself, if I have to start any, every one of those from scratch, I'm going to go start braving mad. And to top it off, I don't have Joom Shaper anymore, that beautiful layout tool in Joomla. So I need something. So over the course of about three days, I put this whole thing together in about three days. All the configuration, all the modules, everything, all the CSS in about three days. And then I've been tweaking it here a bit, a little bit here and there as we go. Now, one last thing. This is temporary. Everything we're talking about today is temporary because here's what's coming. You probably heard of Starshot, and if you haven't, Starshot is the latest thing in the Drupal community to produce an easy to distribute version of Drupal that will help site builders get a head start. It's gonna come with a whole bunch of what's called recipes, and it's going to be click a button, launch a site, and you've got basically what I'm giving you, only it's going to be a lot better, I promise. Now, one of the parts of Starshot is called Experience Builder. It is going to be the best of, uh, of layout builder and para paragraphs on steroids, and it's going to be apparently, again, if they do everything they've said, it's going to be pretty amazing. It's going to kill Every third-party layout builder, which I'm going to share with you in just a moment, it's going to kill them all. Um, uh, Site Studio, Acquia Site Studio, no one's going to use that anymore, let alone Acquia. Um, I don't think. Provis from Promet Source, no, nah, no one's going to use it. Promet Source will still use it, but Starshot with this um, experience builder is going to be pretty amazing, and the link is on the screen, and it's it's in your book. So. Um, <clears throat> in the guide, let me just quickly get over here for just a second. Um, I just want to give you a very quick overview of the current page builders in Drupal. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because that's not the point of today. You have Acquia Site Studio. You have to be an Acquia client. Costs, it costs a, a fortune, obviously, to be an Acquia client. It's really great. Um, <coughs> it is the best of the best right now. But again, I don't think it's going to be around that much longer. Uh, DXPR has their own version of, uh, of a page builder. I use the DXPR theme. It's free. You'll see it in just a minute. Uh, their page builder costs money, but not a lot, and it's actually pretty good. Um, again, it's clean, easy to use, it's reasonably priced, and uh, literally it's drag drop. It's the closest to Elementor of all of them so far. It's nowhere near as good as Elementor, but it's pretty close. Another one is, comes from A10 Design Group. From uh, It's called Mercury. You can't get pricing without a demo, so I don't know what it costs. <laughs> the other one that I think is probably the coolest out here is OpenY. This is free. They, You know how much they've spent on it? Just take a guess. Developing this page builder distribution over a million dollars. I did it in three weeks. Now mine's nowhere near as good as, this is amazing. Every component is a downloadable module, so it's completely separate. You want tabs, you want an accordion block, 
it's a downloadable module. So it's really, really well built. And if this is something you're interested in, again, the link is there. I had a great chat with Avi, who is one of the developers behind it. Um, I had a chat with him at MidCamp, and um, I think it's terrific. It's, again, it's a distribution you download for free, so you've got to use it as a distribution. To me, that's a negative, not a positive. I've never been a fan of distributions, but again, it's amazing. And did I mention it's free and fully developed and anyone can use it, not just the YMCA. So again, I, I promised him I would mention it. I think it's absolutely terrific. Um, and uh, it's, uh, again, you can't get the cloud hosting, of course, because you're not the YMCA, but it, again, it's a distribution. Finally, Provis from Promit Source is another one. Uh, this is a really good page builder. Yes, I do work for Promit Source, so I kind of have to say that. Would I use it? Again, I won't. Why? It's a distribution. I don't like distributions. They're not easily upgradable and updatable. So um, while it is excellent and produces results that look something like this, let me just get to it real quick. Um, huh, I think I changed. I think I closed it. Meridian. There it is. Oh, no, it's not. Let's get the right button. There we go. This is Provis. Uh, and it's very, very nice. But I'm going to show you that you can do all of this for free. Now, to their credit, this is core and contributed with a whole bunch of custom back-end theming. Again, what I'm going to share with you, no themes, no, no overrides. So it's pretty cool as well. All right. Um, so again, in your book here, I've given you progress from the DrupalCon Experience Builder Initiative, a bunch of links there. You really should watch this June update. This is worth watching, this one here, because um, uh, they go through all the things they're promising. Like I said, if they deliver on what they promised, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be Elementor level. I, I'm pretty excited about it. So like I said, Everything I'm showing you today is temporary, but Starshot is, I don't know, 8, 10, 12, 18 months away. I'm building 30 sites right now. And so what we're going to show you today is this, is, uh, is pretty good. This is the starter site that you can get, uh, rodsurl.com slash starter site. Don't do it now because it takes a little bit to boot up, and I'll, but I'll show it to you as we go. All right. So everything I'm going to show you today is at um, DrupalLayoutBuilder.com, which is a copy of my starter site, and we're going to go through all of that. A couple of things you need to know about this particular site is that it uses a DXPR theme, and uh, which is free, and I love it. It's highly customizable, highly, uh, it, it just works. It's really great. Um, I updated text formats with media link, media, link it, button styles. And I removed the image upload, which you should always do. Google Map Block uses simple GMAP module to turn a one-line address into a Google Map. I've enhanced the media manager by adding uh, a whole bunch of uh, image styles to it using focal point, scale and, uh, scale and crop. Um, and then there is, uh, and I've got a link to a course on that there. Uh, as well as I've got a bunch of styles for background colors and text, and I did all the CSS in Acid Injector. I did that for two reasons. One, I really like Acid Injector. It allows you to inject CSS and JavaScript into your Drupal site without touching the theme. The second reason I use it is because I want you to be able to go and get the CSS, and I, again, your site builders, I don't want you screwing with the theme. So it's all in a module called Acid Injector, which I'll show you. <coughs> There's some basic stuff here on Layout Builder. All right, so here's what we have done. And here are the modules we're using. The first module is Bootstrap Layout Builder, which we're going to cover all of these as we go. Uh, this is on top of basic Layout Builder. Layout Builder blocks, styles, restrictions, reorder, section library, Layout Builder modal, Layout Builder direct add, and save and edit. These are contributed modules, so if you go to drupal.org slash nodes, nodes, whatever it is, layout, layout builder documentation, there's a link to the contributed modules. There's like 30 or 40 of them. 
Why did I choose these? The least amount of friction, and they just work. There are modules that I tried from that list that don't work. It at least didn't for me. And so if it didn't work straight away and the documentation wasn't good enough, I just discarded it. So out of the box, Layout Builder plus these modules and the um, <clears throat> configuration that we'll look at is how this works. However, the second part to this is custom block types. How many of you have created a custom block type? Okay, it's really simple to do, right? You create a custom block type, you add your fields. The magic is in the CSS then that you apply. Now, technically, if you're doing this the Drupal way, you should have twig templates for each of these custom blocks. But remember, this is a codeless solution. So no template overrides, no twig files for any of these blocks. And I think you'll see how it works. So custom blocks then. What's going on? Oh, hang on. There we go. Block types. So beyond the basic block, this guy will hear me over here, I added what I'm calling a card block. You'll see what that looks like. A files list, a Google map block, which uses a simple GMAP module, takes a one-line address, makes it a Google map without using the Google API, so it's free. Oh, it blocks. A heading, an image embed, a large banner with center text, a large banner with text on the side. That's just, um, yeah, so simple. Stat card, two column with text <coughs> on the left, and then a video. What the, the magic of some of these is, once you turn Layout Builder on, guess what you can do with a custom block? You can use Layout Builder to design and lay out your custom block types. So that's most of the magic right here with these different block types. So let's dive in and take a look at what we did. <clears throat> okay, where'd Safari go? So this is DrupalLayoutBuilder.com. You can, you can go there. Um, and I'm using the brand new menu that is in Core Experimental. So if it blows up, you can blame me for turning this on. Uh, this is an interesting menu based on uh, the um, Gin menu. And this is coming in Drupal 11. This is the menu in Drupal 11, which is being released July 27th, by the way. That just got announced. So. I'm going to click on the demo page because this is probably a better way to demonstrate this and see how it works. All right. So the very first module we installed was Bootstrap Layout Builder. Bootstrap Layout Builder gives you all of the bootstrap goodness. Um, and in the book, I've given you the link. I've given you pros, uh, the what it does, <coughs> screenshots, pros and cons for each of these. It adds responsive grid support. So if you've used Layout Builder out of the box and you click two column layout, what do you get? Well, you get 50, 50 or 60, you know, whatever, 65, 33, 66, 33, et cetera. This brings bootstrap support. Now you need a bootstrap theme like DXPR. That's one of the reasons I use it. And it works incredibly well. The screenshots here, when you add a section, it opens up a window that gives you a boxed layout, a full layout, and an edge-to-edge -edge layout with or without gutters. Now, I never use full, so I always use boxed with or without gutters and edge-to-edge -edge with, with or without gutters. And <clears throat> what is and not only that, you can add um, background, typography, spacing, border, shadow, and animation layouts to this thing. Let's take a quick peek. So I'm going to click Layout here, and I'm just going to click Add Section. Sorry, clicked the wrong button while it was loading. I swear the internet access here is somewhat sketchy. All right, wow, sorry about that. Add Section. So here's your Bootstrap Layout Builder. I'm going to click two columns just for kicks and giggles, and now I've got Desktop, tablet, mobile layouts. I've got box with gutters, edge to edge without gutters. 
If I click on the paint roller, I can change the background from a color to an image to a video out of the media manager. I can set my typography color, left, center, or right justified. I can add spacing, padding, and margins around the section. I can add a border, shadow, and I can even animate it floating in from the left to the right or whatever I want. This is the very first module you install and it works amazingly well. The configuration for this module is in a couple of different places as you can probably appreciate. Um, <clears throat> oh, I should have just left the older menu in. Let's see, where's configure? There it is. Nope. That's structure. Where the heck did configuration go? Unbelievable. There it is. Wow. Sorry, guys. Um, so there's very little configuration on Bootstrap Layout Builder itself. You can turn on and off some of those features, of course. You can add your own breakpoints here. I've stuck with the normal ones. You can add your own layouts. You can. This has a 1 to 12 column layout. I've restricted to just 1 to, th one to 4. Uh, so you can add or define styles. And you can, uh, again, uh, hide advanced settings, which I wouldn't do, because you can also add your own classes in there as well. But there's a better way to do it. I'll show you in just a minute. The other thing you need to configure here for Bootstrap Layout Builder is the Bootstrap uh, Layout Builder styles. I'm sorry. Uh, wrong one. Um, where am I here? Bootstrap styles. So the different colors for the text and the different colors for the background, uh, you just define them here. <clears throat> so it comes with yellow, red, light. I added light blue, blue, and orange. Now, what is this stuff? This is the CSS class, and this is the label. What do you have to do with CSS classes? You just have to go define them. So in Asset Injector, I have all of the color definitions for each of the BSBG light dash blue. Uh, bootstrap background dark blue. And I just created the color scheme for it. And again, it's really simple to do. I'm gonna hit configuration, or I'm gonna go to development. Yeah, I really hate this new menu. Why did I do this? Um, <laughs> this is, how many of you have used Asset Injector? No. Oh my goodness, I'm about to change your lives. Um, here are all the bootstrap styles. And this is injected wherever I tell it to be injected. So here is, there's that BSBG dark blue. Background color, important. Field content, field content, the color is going to, if the background is blue, the content's going to be white. So I don't have to change the, this, the style of the text. Here's the color of the tooltip in the back end. So you define all of, and again, I'm giving this all to you for free. It's all yours. Um, so you can play with it and do whatever you want with it. But you can design, you can put your own color scheme right in the back of Bootstrap Layout. Uh, and it works incredibly well. So when you look at this later, Bootstrap Styles is where you'll find all of those buttons and colors, okay? Uh, in the book, I give you uh, images of all of this, and again, those are the, there's the styles that I added into uh, for each of those, the text styles and the background styles. And then add the, just add the CSS and Asset Injector. Uh, developers hate Asset Injector, themers hate it, but site builders love it. I mean... Yes, this should be in your theme, but until I can manipulate my theme and I'm playing with it, I can put it in Acid Injector and test it out until I'm ready. I love Acid Injector. All right, um, the next one is Layout Builder Blocks. Um, Layout Builder Blocks adds the, the bootstrap styles to blocks, not just sections. So they work really well together. The configuration is all the same here. So I'm not, I'm not um, gonna even spend much time on it, but when you add a block, you get the same style drop down over here where you are able to add a different background color for a block 
what does that look like? Well, let's go back to our demo here for a second. And I'm gonna, whoops, click layout. And I'm just gonna click add a basic block here. You'll note that it's not coming up on the side if you've used Layout Builder before. And I had a whole drop down there. Don't worry, we'll get to those. If I click on the style, I, again, I've got the exact same kinds of options here in blocks as I had in um, sections. So really, really helpful. So that's number two. Number three, Layout Builder Styles. This is by a guy named Brian Osborne at Princeton University. Um, uh, the, he developed it for the university, and they let him. They allowed him to publish it uh, in the um, in the module section. What it does is it brings classes to your sections and blocks. So, for instance, here I have a style called rounded corners. So, if I make a block with a colored background, this will automatically give me nice rounded corners around them, and it does it for images too. It's pretty darn cool. The way that works then is inside of um, the configuration. Where am I here? Oh my goodness. There we are. Under um, Layout Builder Styles, I have four, uh, four styles, and you could do as many as you want. Hide this section. In Layout Builder, you can't hide a section. In Elementor and Joom Shaper, you just click a little button and the section is hidden. Now, why would you hide a section? Well, on my church website, we have annual events, Easter, Christmas, uh, a bunch of the kids stuff that we do. Why would I do all that work designing these sections only to delete them? I just hide them and I do it with a style, a built-in Drupal style. I didn't even have to style it. Um, for instance, this rounded corners, the class is called rounded, which isn't a Drupal class. And then what do I do? I go into Acid Injector, and I define the style for rounded. And as soon as I click rounded corners in the block, well, guess what? It invokes that CSS, and boom, you got rounded corners. Layout Builder Styles is a fantastic module that, again, does exactly what you've just seen. It allows you to add styles to sections or blocks you can have you can do multiple um, styles, and you can design your own. It's absolutely awesome. Here's an example of it. Here, you, in, when you're creating it, you choose whether it's a block or a section, and you can even group them into different groups if you have a whole bunch. Uh, you can even restrict it and not allow it on certain block types if you want as well. So, Layout Builder Styles is really great. Um, and again, there's those four for the section and a couple for the blocks. The next one that I implemented was Layout Builder Restrictions. Now, uh, again, this may not be ne needed for much longer. Uh, it's supposed to come in core. What this does is it restricts blocks and layouts. This is worth the price of admission because out of the box, you get the standard ones that you don't want anybody using. If you've got a beautifully built layout builder tool, you don't want using you don't you want them using the bootstrap layouts sections, right? Well, with restrictions, all you do is is just uncheck them. And nobody will ever see those four at the top that are the built-in ones. They'll only see the bootstrap ones. So again, I only allow one, two, three, and sometimes four column sections. Uh, and you can also restrict the blocks by section. So if you don't want somebody adding a menu to a block, which nobody does, you can restrict that, and so your content editors can't do something bad, which again is pretty cool. Um, once it's configured, they can only select the sections and blocks that have been pre-authorized ac according to your style guide or rules. By the way, guys, if you've got questions, jump in. Like, just interrupt me. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, I'm, I try to be a pretty easygoing kind of trainer. All right. And there's really nothing to show you on that one uh, except that I've got it implemented. 
And so when you go and add something to the layout, again, the only thing they're seeing now is the four bootstrap columns, none of the built-in Drupal ones, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna leave the, that screen up because the next one is something that you're gonna to wanna to see. Uh, sorry. Layout Builder Reorder. So if you've used Layout Builder for any length of time, you know that you can click and drag a block to a different section, right? You can rearrange blocks, just click and drag. But you can't do that with sections. Well, now you can. Layout Builder Reorder allows you to reorder sections using a move up and a move down button. I don't know about you, but <laughs> there have been many times where I've gone and put the wrong section in the wrong place, or I've changed my mind. This allows me to quickly click a button and it moves them up and down. Uh, um, not even a Provis can do that, which is pretty cool. So again, there's no configuring. You just install it, turn it on. I did add some CSS to improve the spacing just a little bit. So here on the screen, you can see that if I get rid of that, you've got this move up and move down button and literally it just moves it down <coughs> and moves it back up again. It's not a click and drag. It's just click the button, click the button, click the button, which is still better than not having it at all. I know I'm going super quickly through this, but we only have 45 minutes. So, um, and, and I'm gonna give you a ton of resources at the end so you'll you can pick your way through this. All right, next, I love this one. Layout or section library. What this does, it allows you to save sections so you can instantly import them later on. I use this everywhere. Again, my church website, Easter next year, if I hadn't hidden it, I could have just saved that section and boom, imported it next Easter, updated it a little bit, saved me half an hour's worth of work. How does that work? Well, let me show you. I'm going to click import from library, and I've already saved a bunch. Here's a bunch that I've saved, full width, two column text with an image. Um, let's just, yeah, we'll choose that one. Now, what you can do here is you get to now configure it. But all the hard work of adding the section, getting the color scheme right, uh, the layout right, the heading, the body, all I have to do now is add an image. That's supposed to say image, whatever. Full access to the media manager. There we go. There's me on the dragon's tail. They take pictures of you while you're writing this thing. It's pretty cool. Click add block. And just that quickly, I've added a brand new block to my layout. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's section library, absolutely worth getting. Oh, and by the way, you can manage these. If we go back to content, here's your layout builder library. Under content, layout builder library, and here's all of the sections I've saved. Oh, not only sections, entire pages. Your marketing team has developed a layout that they like for marketing. You can save the whole page import it in one step and go and update the blocks, right? Saves all kinds of time. That's Layout Builder Library. So quick question. So yeah, please. In, in the weirdest, strangest way, like this, you were talking about your Easter example. So yeah. Is there a way to schedule it? Where no, it? not yet. Right. That would be really nice. No, I'll just ask yeah, that no, that would be awesome. Um, there's no way, his question was, is there a way to schedule the hiding and unhiding of sections? Not yet and probably won't be, but uh, just the fact that I can check one button and it's back, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, and because Layout Builder uses revisions, and if you have workflows turned on, you can put this back into draft mode, make all those changes over time, save it, publish it, and boom, you're good to go, right? Workflows and Layout Builder, ooh, dynamic duo. All right, um, the next one is Layout Builder Modal. You probably already noticed none of my things are opening up on the sidebar except the sections. They're all opening up in this big, nice modal window where I can actually use the body field and it's not tiny, 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 it's actually big. Well, that's what Layout Builder Modal does for us. 
it allows us to set the width of the modal window in the configuration and you can make this all of your blocks and all of your configurable items show up in the middle in a modal window where you've got far more space than if you were crammed over to the side. That was one of my biggest frustrations with Layout Builder out of the box, is that I'm constantly fighting that tiny, tiny little body field. Well, now, not so much anymore, because as you've probably seen, anytime I open something up to configure it, it opens in a modal window where I've got the full body and all of the elements that I, that I need. Really, really helpful. Um, there is an alternative to this. This is one of those ones where there's a valid alternative, but I could never get it to work. Layout Builder Plus is supposed to be really amazing at this. I could not get it to work. I don't know why. I, used, I put it even on a blank Drupal site with absolutely nothing else on it. I just couldn't get it to work. Other people have... I don't know what I did wrong, but it's, it's pretty cool as well. Um, but like I said, everything in a modal pop-up window, which is really neat. Um, okay, Layout Builder Direct Add is, I think, one of the last ones we're going to talk about. And that's this, where I have a drop-down for all of my custom block types. And I like this. Now, there is an alternative to this, too. If I need to go and add a view, well, there's that more button down there, and it just opens up the standard choose a block window, which I have restricted on this site as well. Um, so that's direct add. The alternative to direct add is layout builder browser. The only reason I don't like it is because to have an image associated with the block, you actually have to upload it into, you have to have FTP access or access to the server. It's, you can't upload the files. You've got to upload them via FTP or something like that. So again, more friction than what I wanted. Um, the last one, I don't know, I just said that a minute ago. I don't know if it's the last one or not, is Layout Builder Save and Edit. Um, I have Save and Edit buttons all over the place in my Drupal site, and they have one for Layout Builder. Why is this helpful? Well. I don't know about you, but when you click save, what happens? Takes you back to view mode, right? Yeah. You're out of the edit mode. Save and edit leaves you in the edit mode. So now I can save multiple times, have multiple versions, and never leave the edit mode, which saves me time of going out and coming back in again. It's little simple things like this, right? <laughs> that make the experience just so much better. Uh, there's no configuring it, you just install it and turn it on and it works. Um, well, I said that, and then I should say this. Yeah, you actually have, you do have to choose the node types. Sorry about that. All right. The reason this works as well as it does is the custom block types. So again, with just a couple of minutes left, I'm going to show you that, a couple of these, just so you can see how they, how they work. Um, I have, and these are just block types. There's nothing fancy here. Um, Oops, that's not where I want to go. Where is my structure menu? There it is, block types. And I'm going to show you the large banner text on the side one. Because that's a little bit more complicated than just a normal one. So, fields. Remember, everything's an entity in Drupal. You can field blocks now. All I have is a body field here. No big deal. But if I click Manage Display, I've used Layout Builder to lay out the block. And I've made it with a two-column block layout, and I put the body on the left. So when I use this in a full-width section with a background image, the text is all the way over to the left. And I've got CSS that formats the body field and the, um, the title field. But also, by the way, I should show you this. Oh, that's not what I want, sorry. Um, Well, this, 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 the, the, that is the block we just looked at. I've also created a bunch of styles for buttons, and I've created a bunch of styles for bigger text. And, and I've got um, uh, styles in here 
for the typography as well. Again, that's all in your um, acid injector. So the blocks that I've created, um, a card is simply styled, so the title text is very large. Um, this is a card. So that's a card. Uh, and that, again, that's just pure CSS. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Sorry, thank you. So that's a card. If I choose add a card block, that's what you'll get. You can include the image, the title, and the text. This is also a card block. When you choose card in the Layout Builder styles, it creates a, a padded card type. There's your button styles, which I showed you a minute ago. Um, there's the another uh, style that has got a lot of padding around the block on the left-hand side. So, um, these card block types will be in your starter site if you, if you choose to look at it. And of course, you can look at Drupal Layout Builder anytime you want. Um, and you'll see how I built them. The other one that's interesting is the two-column layout. What I did there is it is a two-column block. And inside the left-hand column, I have two blocks. Again, all with Layout Builder. I added two custom blocks inside of the left block, inside of a two-column section. Just takes a little imagination to, to work this out. Can I be honest? What I did was I looked at Provis, and I looked at um, uh, Site Studio, and I looked at a couple of websites where I looked and I saw, I really love what they've done. Now, how can I do that with Layout Builder without any code? <coughs> and this is what I came up with. Custom block types, some CSS, and these modules that we've added. So, um, again, here in your book, I've talked about the large banner with the text on the side. I listed the CSS for it, and I told you how I, exactly how I built it. So if you want to try and building it for yourself, you can do that. Um, all right, we've got three minutes if we're going to keep our time frame. Questions before I go to resources? Has this been helpful? Has this been eye-opening? Good. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm a firm believer that we can use Layout Builder right away out of the box and get some amazing results. Yeah. Have you looked into any possibility with um, the section library of exporting those from one site and importing them into another? So I haven't, um, but I'm almost positive it's it's a configuration item. Um, I've not looked at it, but I'm 99% sure it's config. So yeah, you could. Of course, you couldn't get the images, but the structure, of course, you can. Um, so again, when you want to add something to the library here, you just you give it a label, you take a screenshot and upload it, and click Save, and you've got a new section in your section library. So that's a great question. I'll, I'll have to check into that. Is all this permission, like, say, for instance, like different roles? I have not integrated roles into it yet. Um, the starter site, when you log into the starter site, if you spin one up, you're, you're the super admin. You're super user number one. Um, but of course, yeah, this would not be hard to manage with permissions, right? Layouts are part of the permission system. That's a great question, by the way. Both of those were. I really wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> This is not a replacement for core, this is just uh, another offer. This is core. This is core and contributed modules. There's no code. I've not written one line of code except CSS. So there's nothing preventing you from going and starting a brand new Drupal site, turning on Layout Builder, downloading and installing all these modules, <coughs> copying my configuration over, and boom, it's yours. In fact, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you in about 30 seconds. So you can take it, rip it apart, change it, use it. I'm using this, what I'm calling my starter site, which is what you're seeing, what you've been seeing. I'm using it to move 30 Joomla sites into Drupal right now. And it is saving me days of work. Like this layout builder is 95% of what my clients need in design, in custom landing pages. The stuff that I haven't done yet, I haven't done accordions. I won't do tabs. I think tabs are ridiculous. Um, and and I, 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 I 
I gave in on one client. I have a slideshow. It's a views slideshow. It's it's views. I use views slideshow for it. It's not layout builder. But ugh. But no, it's all core and contrib. Yeah. Yep. That would cost you tons of money to do that if you didn't have this. Oh my stars. Yeah, like I said, it took me three days of just constant thinking about it and working while I was sick, getting better from COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's talk about resources for just a minute. Um, I have to say I'm sponsored today by OS Training, so yay. Thank you to OS Training for sending me here. I'm wearing the shirt. Um, Robbie, I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> Over. I have a course on all of this at OS Training. It's behind a paywall. I'm not trying to sell you on anything, but it's there if you want it. Um, remote development, the course, the, the site you're going to spin up when you, if you spin up the starter site is based on Gitpod. Uh, Ofershal is a developer down in, in Florida. He's, my Drupal, he's one of my Drupal heroes. Uh, it's free. You can use it for 50 hours a month, 50 sites for free. Free. Yeah, and I've got a ton of videos on it at OS Tips. I do a five to seven minute video every week uh, called OS Tips from OS Training. It's on YouTube, and I've got a ton of videos on all of this. So you'll be able to watch, and they're pretty recent, by the way. Um, so DrupalHelps.com, I'm gonna, uh, you know what, because I like you so much, and we've had such a great time, I'm gonna give you a different URL. Write this down, RodsURL.com. Actually, let me put it up on the screen for you. Starter site. What that's going to do is it will spin up a Gitpod repository and it will magically create everything I've just shown you. The content, all the content types, um, I've got an event content type in there, a blog content type, a news content type. All the configuration I've shown you is in there. All the CSS is in there. Um, all the views, the latest news, latest event views, they're built for you. Um, all of the custom block types are in there and configured for you. And uh, you can take it and use it and do whatever you want with it. If nothing else, you can rip it apart to see how it works and maybe put your own twist on it. The beauty of this is, it's free, right? And it works, it's core and contributing. And you don't have to code to make it work. Uh, and that was one of the big things for me because I work with beginning site builders a lot <coughs> and I want them to feel comfortable using this. So, all right. You need a GitHub account yeah. to use Gitpod, but it's no big deal. Again, that's free as well. You'll, I've got a video um, in fact, if you go to uh, Layout Builder, DrupalLayoutBuilder.com, I'm pretty sure, yeah, if you just watch that video, it's going to help you kind of get started. It's on the front page there. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, huh, there you go. There's a video on the front page of the site that will help you get started. So, what, what's the name of the site again? DrupalLayoutBuilder.com. I know, I cheated. The domain was there. I couldn't believe it. So I grabbed it. Good. Yeah, all this is already retired in the PDF that you get. Yep, everything's in the PDF. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so just download that PDF. Yeah. And the slides are there. As well. If you can, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, we'll see what we can do for you. I don't know what you got going on there. Any, any questions? Are you intimidated by this? I hope not. This is doable. Even for a beginner site builder who just took my class yesterday, this is doable. You're wrapping your head around is going to take a little bit, um, but it's doable for even a basic site building. Once you just learn a couple of the concepts, you're, you're going to be going through this. So. You are an excellent instructor. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. All right. Personal, personal question. Personal or personal? Okay, hang on. We'll hit the button then. Thank you very much.